In this video, I need to replace the exhaust cross box on my Citroen 2CV because it blew yesterday. Uh, I think it has a different design to this one. This is nice and cylindrical. Oh no, there's the seam. I think mine has blown that seam apart. I will see if she's willing to demonstrate. Uh, I hope she will. It would be useful just to double check. This is actually the problem before we get too carried away. That sounds pretty terrible. I know this is more serious than I thought, I think. Oh no. Oh, right, okay. This is more serious than I thought. She's blown a hole in the manifold. So I've just pushed back a flap of metal under here. That's getting very hot very quickly. That's where the blow is. Oh, that's not good at all. Because that means having to remove everything. Oh, Ellie, why now? We were meant to be driving to Coventry in two days time. Oh well, stop warming everything up I guess. And uh, just get stuck in. I wonder if I've got a new hose to replace this one. That's actually preventative. I don't think it has actually split entirely, but it was starting to go. So I thought, um, because I was driving to Croatia, I thought I'd um, apply some um, emergency duct tape before the event. Yes, I actually managed to find something in my stash of chaos and it only took a couple of minutes. Uh, this is a replacement manifold. And uh, this is the pipe that has blown. It's blown on the other side down here. I've never had that before in all my years of 2CVing. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get the manifold off. Uh, so to do that, we've got to replace, uh, remove rather the alternator, uh, the air filter assembly, the uh, carburetor. Well, the carburetor can come off with the manifold and actually be swapped on later. Uh, the heat exchangers have got to come off, so all the front wings have got to come off. Uh, yeah, it's going to be quite an involved job. What, while I'm at it, the, the reason I have a spare cross box is this engine produces a very strange resonance at higher revs. And uh, me and Pete Sparrow have puzzled about this. Um, if it's puzzling Pete, it must be puzzling. Uh, we don't think it's the engine itself. We think the resonance may actually be in the exhaust cross box. So if heat exchangers are coming off, then the cross box might as well come off as well. And while I don't have to remove the wings, I think it just makes life easier, especially getting at the inlet manifold bolts. So um, yeah, gonna go for it and uh, get the bodywork off. Well, there we go. Thought I'd go all fancy with me time lapse. How funky is that? Uh, next thing to do is get rid of these hoses. This one's held on by garden twine because the last thing you want is your cardboard hoses falling off and landing on the hot exhaust because that gets um, very exciting. Now the other one is held on by a cable tie. So I just uh, undo it from there, undo it from the heat exchanger and then try and unfread it. Sometimes I just leave it hanging around the engine bay but then it gets in the way and causes minor upset. Uh, I think the next thing to do is start getting the air filter assembly off. Uh, that's uh, held by an 11mm down here on the back leg. Uh, two 17s or 16s sometimes, just for extra lols with the same thread size um, to hold it to the uh, starter motor, to the bell housing rather. And then uh, screwdriver to get this clip off and we're away. So I think we'll start with the 11mm down the back. I have disconnected the battery now because we're going to be disconnecting the alternator. And uh, if the alternator wires start touching, again, life gets rather exciting. There aren't many fuses on a 2CV, four in this case, although I've added a couple more. I've got a couple extra ones on the headlamps. The headlamps unfused from the factory. That one's definitely a 16, joy. As this one's a 17. I don't know why Citroen muck things up like this. Uh, older 2CVs tend to have 12mm headed bolts, even though it's a 7mm thread, which would normally be 11. Manufacture a specific bolt, we get quite a lot of them these days, all various odd torques and inside torques and whatever. Nothing new. Right, I need to try and find a 16mm spanner. These shouldn't be too tight, all they're doing is holding the assembly in. Uh, they back up onto the bolts that hold 
the engine to the bell housing. So those ones you do want tight. Uh, I'm going to do this bottom one down here. A uh, breather pipe is disconnecting from there. Uh, so I should be able to lift this off at the back. He says. There we go. And there's that washer. And then slide it back. Pull it off the carburetor. Ooh. Have I got my wiring attached to this? There was a metal clip. A uh, metal clip is not really what you want. Yeah, I've got it held on. Uh, hold, holding onto the wiring loom. I think I'm gonna have to snip that. Yeah, from the factory they had a metal clip which holds the, uh, the wiring loom to the air filter assembly just to keep things from moving around too much. And uh, that really isn't a good idea. Uh, quite often that clip can um, simply wear through the wiring loom. So you have 12 volts suddenly finding an exciting air. So uh, most people consider that undesirable. And there we go, it's the air filter assembly away. All right, now it's probably alternator off next. I need a 10 mil and a 14 mil for that job. You enjoy looking at my 2CV while I'm out of shot, trying to work out where my 10 mil spanner has gone this time. <laughs> What is it with 10mm spanners and the amazing ability to disappear? And it's disappeared from this kit as well. Excellent. Um, I was using a 10mm as a makeshift spoon at some point. Uh, so maybe it's still there. Yes. Oh, and even better, it's a flex head ratchet. Extra poshness. There we go. I've now replaced it with an actual spoon because I'm going up in the world. Oh yeah, I remember. I've, I've got a temporary fix to the wiring here uh, where the alternator wiring fell short and I've wired in two wires, but that does seem to be working. So maybe we'll leave it um, as it is. Got nuts, washers, shake-proof washers, and two connectors because of my random wiring. A little spade connector and the alternator wiring is now free. And we'll put the uh, nuts and washers back on to avoid losing them later. Right, I'm going to need an 11mm spanner to loosen the adjuster and then uh, 14s down below. Start with the adjuster, we need to back it right out. Well, in fact, I've got to remove the bolt completely. The one problem with my channel is um, you could easily begin to believe that old cars are unreliable. No, I think it's more reflection on me. Uh, I'm not very good at looking after my cars. Uh, they don't get um, all the maintenance they need and deserve. Uh, I try my best and uh, I'm determined to be better in 2021. But having been away, having had a lot going on in my life, I have fallen a bit behind with some of the jobs. I freely admit it. Not that that excuses why this has happened. I still don't fully understand why Ellie has blown this part of her um, exhaust up. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have got some penetrating oil on that badger. That's interesting. There should be a shake-proof washer on there, and there isn't, but nonetheless, it hasn't come loose. And a bit more. I probably should have taken the um, little shroud off to make life a bit easier, because we're going to have to disentangle uh, the belt. There is a fan belt on a 2CV, despite some period advertising that suggested otherwise. But the belt is driven by the fan, rather than the fan being powered by it, as you would more traditionally find on older cars. Go, that comes the big bolt. Brilliant. Oh, throw the nuts away. Always good. Handy bit of cardboard on the floor for putting bolts on. Uh, let's just have a rummage under here and find what I've now lost. Uh, not the first drop of the day, there's the first drop of the day. Well, where did that nut go? It's a problem with gloves, you lose your sensation. It makes it a lot easier to do stuff like drop nuts. All right, let's get this little cover off down here. Uh, all three are a slide, oh, all two in this case, are a slide fitting. So you just loosen the bolts and you can pull the little cover off on the top of the um, uh, assembly here. Now it should be an easy case of unhooking 
the alternator. That's the alternator off. A dinky little thing which does provide no charging whatsoever at um, lower revs. Uh, what should we go for next? Uh, need to disconnect. No, I don't need to disconnect. The heat exchangers, they can stay connected. They're not going far. Uh, so we're probably on to exhaust clamps. I'm just wondering if I need to um, remove the wiring loom. I'm not sure I do, actually. We've got another breather pipe there. No, I, don't I think we can work our way around the loom. So um, I'm going to have to disconnect the throttle cable connections. That starts with the throttle cable return. And then the cable itself. And now I'm doing my best to drop the... You know what, I'm just going to take the cotter pin off and we'll put it over here and hope it's safe there. If I could find my magnetic parts tray, it would definitely be safe. I'm going to need a magnetic pickup tool to get... Are you starting to see why it takes me so long to do so? Because I'm going to spend most of my time looking for things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these magnetic pickup tool are um, an absolute godsend. So that's a throttle return spring. We'll put that safely to one side as well. I think I will keep my magnetic pickup tool because I think I might be using it a lot. And uh, choke cable is next. I have a feeling that's a 10. There, yeah, is that a 10? No, it's an 8. Okay. Left the 8 on the floor over here. There's an 8 to secure it there. That pulls out. And then an 8 here so we can release the cable. I think. Hey, throttle cable, stop trying to park yourself across the battery terminals if you'd be so kind. Right, carburetor now disconnected from most things. We've obviously still got fuel going on, so that's probably the next thing to disconnect. Fuel pipe down here, held by a hose clip of the type you're probably not meant to use on fuel lines. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to grab the old um, Bulldog BDX penetrating oil which they kindly sent me. Unleash the Bulldog. It might make getting these clamps undone a bit easier. And there's some on the manifold nuts down there as well, sink, soaking in. Fortunately, in some ways, it's not actually that long since this lot all came apart. So that's not ideal. That means I've had previous failures. Uh, but yeah, at least it means all this stuff should come undone. A bit too much hassle. I've got the Burton exhaust clamps, which I do find very useful. So I have a new ignition coil on the way from Burton, but I don't think it's going to arrive until tomorrow, which is a bit of a shame. It's days like this, I'm full of admiration for people who do this for a living, where time, you know, literally costs you money. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to be sat at home editing videos and drinking tea, but... Uh, Nonetheless, I'm here, but there's no rush, really, for all the clamps variously down there. Is that one released? There we go. So heat exchanger off. We'll just leave that there. It's only got to be out of our way. And we'll jump onto the other side. I'll we'll come and have a watch over here. If I can avoid smacking all of my cars quite so much, that'd be good. Uh, I, I need the hammer, but not just now. Where's, where's, where's the ratchet gone? The one that was in my hands mere moments ago. I'll tell you what, after working on the Fox, this is a, a, nothing short of a revelation, really, to be able to get panels out of your way so you can actually do stuff. Marvellous. Now we are motoring people. This will all be off in no time. I sometimes think power tools will make life a lot easier, but when I watch... Folk like Mighty Car Mods, you know, they've got all that brand new equipment and it just doesn't feel like two blokes mucking about on the driveway anymore. Which is what I enjoyed that program for. Uh, I, I still like Mighty Car Mods a great deal. Rather stupidly, I did actually speak to Mighty Car Mods when I was in Sydney, um, but we didn't manage to um, arrange a meter. And that was largely because I wanted to meet the mirror more than anything. And the mirror was not available. And looking back, that may not have been my um, politest move to go, oh, the mirror's not available, I don't want to meet you up. But that's effectively what I said. So um, that was stupidity on my part. But yeah, my gosh, they bring a level of professionalism that I can only dream of. Well, having said that, 
I think I quite like my niche. I mean, yes, I'm a bit rubbish, but I think that works well enough. Judging by feedback, anyway. Obviously, some people don't get it. Some people think I should be like telly, and uh, I'm not. Right, that should be that heat exchanger off. There we go. So that one can go over there. And now we're getting close to the manifold. Just having a bit of a think, but I think I've got everything off. So, manifold. It's um, 11 mils, 11 mil bolts at the back. Um, I thought one had been tapped out by Pete um, last time it was in because it wouldn't tighten up. And this is a job I hate because getting them out is nice and easy. Getting them back in without destroying the thread in the cylinder head, not so easy. Uh, so it's definitely uh, something to take your time about. And then once we've got the manifold off, hopefully we can get the carburetor off because the bolts that hold the carburetor to the manifold are inaccessible when the manifold is in the car unless you have a special magic spanner which i do not and of course that's the other thing you know pete having to sort out dodgy threads on my cylinder heads uh that's another part of the job you don't really know what you're getting into when you say oh yes this job will cost this amount of pounds that's nuts removed and on to the other side to do likewise i'll spare you that well, it's very dark in here, isn't it? Maybe I should get some light. Hello? Right. I think we're there. We should now be able to lift the manifold off. There we go. Got to thread it out around the headlamp bar. One side and the wiring loom on the other side. Right, there we go. Right. Now, the next job is to get the carburetor off the manifold. And like I say, hopefully that job is now a lot easier given um, I've got ooh, the manifold off because otherwise you can't access the bolts. So let's just take a note of where we are. We've got uh, carburetor. We've got this little plate for holding the throttle cable on the back. So that's first. Then it's carburetor. Then it's an insulator block. And then we're onto the manifold. So uh, let's grab the 11 mil. Oh, that's exciting. That one is 12 mil. And that one. Okay. I thought they were 11s. But no, that would be far too easy, said someone at Citroen. Who wants 11 mil bolts when you can just mix things up a bit with some 12s? Ah, oh, jeepers. There's always something in the way on these. There we go. That one's starting to go. Let's crack off the ones on the front. Ooh, that one's tight. Or is it that the spanner is actually, yeah, the spanner has actually got room to turn on it. Marvellous. Sorry, you're, you're all the way up there and I'm down here. But um, nonetheless, I'm progressing. It's always fun kneading on concrete on a really cold day. A workbench would be very pleasant, I will concede. No, we haven't got any nut on, sorry, no washer on that one. I'm not sure if it's meant to be. This one has a washer, a little shape proof washer. Kind of makes sense, I suppose. Don't want your washer shaking, your carburetor shaking off rather. I'm just going to hope at this stage that the um, insulator block hasn't got a crack in it because I haven't got a replacement of those, I don't think. And that is a thing that can definitely happen, which of course causes an air, causes an air leak. And I think this carburetor is already leaking air, uh, having spoken to Pete Sparrow. And I definitely had an air leak because of the dodgy inlet manifold bolt. And I think that was making her run lean. And I think that's why she was um, pinking so much on the Croatia trip. There we go. Nut, that's that little plate. But remind me not to forget that. And in theory, the carburetor is now ready to come off. So it's a fine theory. It's a theory I'm very nearly proving correct. Ah, there we go. Oh, gasket. Try and keep the gasket on the carburetor. Don't want the gasket getting ripped. Come on. Hadn't thought about that. There we go. So the carburetor is off. Now let's put that on the cardboard over there. Here is our insulator block. And the good news is I can't see any cracks. So that's good. Even better, it appears to be brown. 
which I'm taking as a very good sign. So it looks like someone's already cleaned up the face on this one, but now I've got the carburetor off, I should be able to show you the damage. And uh, that's my pickup tool scaring the hell out of me. Here we go. This is where the failure is. It's blown a little hole in the pipe right there, very neatly. Never seen that before in my life. And uh, oh, that one's not looking in great shape, is it? So that's the exhaust manifold gasket. Um, oh dear. I've got a gasket in place on that side. It's seen better days, but it is there. Uh, have we got a gasket over here? No. I think that gasket has delaminated. Bother! I hadn't even thought of that because if I haven't got the um, decent exhaust manifold gaskets, I'm screwed. That might be the end of tinkering today because I've just reached the end of the road. I'm going to have to order up some inlet manifold gaskets and hope they arrive tomorrow. Otherwise, Ellie will not be going to Coventry. Oh, I didn't think of that. It's one of those items perhaps I should think about keeping in stock. Although, of course, if I kept it in stock, that doesn't necessarily mean I know where it is. Nonetheless, we're, we're defeated for now, sadly. Um, we should just have to have a cup of tea. You can probably hear the kettle boiling in the background. And uh, I'll have to get back to this job. Slightly upsetting, but there we go. I'm going to go and grab some blue roll just to plug the ports on the engine. And we'll leave it at that. Oh, -ho, tea. That's the end of part one of this adventure. Or is that misadventure? So yeah, Ellie needs some sorting out. Find out how I did that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Oh, that's amazing. I've just managed to refit the knackered manifold. Sometimes I amaze even myself. <laughs>